A lot going on in the private equity. Then you, when you look at the cost of credit and cost of money, how much of it is it a, a barrier for private equity? Well, private equity um, is not doing as many deals as it did a few years ago. The cost of capital is higher, obviously, but it's not the biggest problem. The biggest problem is that buyers have bought things over the last couple of years thinking that they would sell them at certain multiples of return. And then sellers, uh, I mean, I say sellers now, they turn it to be sellers, the buyers that were the buyers, they bought these things, now they want to sell them. When they sell them, they want to get a certain rate of return, but they're not likely to get that because the new buyers are saying we can't pay that much because the economy is slowing down and interest rates are higher. And so there's also a fear that you could go into a recession in the United States, and if so, nobody wants to buy into a recession. So I'd say the sellers are here, the buyers are here. There's a gap of 15 percent or so between the bid and ask, and that's why deals are not getting done right now. So, David, what happens? Who's, who's going to budge first, right? At some point, these two mismatches will have to come together. Yes, the economy uh, always works out in some way that there's a compromise between the two. But I would say right now people are waiting to see whether the Fed is going to increase interest rates again. And if they do not, whether they're going to begin to cut. And if they do, then I think people will feel a little bit more emboldened. Uh, one of the issues we have in the United States is, is there going to be a recession or not? Uh, right now, I think the consensus is that there will not be a recession. But, you know, those consensus, consensus change from time to time. So I don't know. Yeah, but, and we're looking at, are you feeling actually any, any stress out there in, in the U.S.? We're looking at lending. I mean, there are these pockets actually of concern in the U.S. economy. There's always con pockets of concern. Right now, we're probably going to grow this year at 1.7 percent. So it's not recession-like numbers, yep. but it's not 2 or 3 percent. I think the U.S. economy is still trying to figure out what the Fed is going to do. Is the Fed going to yeah. cut or not? And when is the Fed going to cut? And one of the issues that hasn't been talked about very much is the Fed probably is going to find it difficult to cut next year before the election. Because if the Fed were to cut interest rates before the election, obviously it will be accused of helping uh, the Democrats, and that would be very unpopular with the Republicans. So I suspect the Fed, to avoid polit political criticism, will probably wait to do any cutting until after the election. Yeah, but at the same time, we also, if we have inflation at 4% and it gets stuck at 4%, it could be very painful for them to get inflation from 4 to 2%. Well, getting from four to two is not easy. It's easier to go from eight to four than four to two. Um, two is what we had for 25 years, but it's not likely we're going to get down there so quickly. So the Fed has been very consistent in saying we've got to get to two percent. They have said a couple of times, well, two percent within range of two percent or, or, or close to two percent. So it may not have to actually hit two percent before they actually begin to cut. But it, it can't be three or four percent. They made it clear they didn't want to go to two percent. David, where do you see deals in private equity? Again, the, the, you know, the private equity space is changing also because of, of the lack of companies to buy. So you have a lot of money chasing the same assets. Well, there are always going to be deals. People are always going to do some deals. There are deals that are going to be done in uh, technology, for sure. That's a very hot area. Uh, a lot of op opportunity is, is now available in, let's say, uh, fin fintech and financial services. Uh, athletics, sports-related thing is also seeing a lot of activity. So I think there will be activity. I just think the prices that the buyers are going to pay is lower than what the sellers really want. Now, that gap is about 15 percent, and it will probably close, but not for a while. And that's across the board in the U.S., in Europe, or valuations in Europe have always been a bit cheaper, so I wonder whether it's easier well, to do Well, there's still a gap here. here. I think here there's some countries in Europe are in recession, in effect, and so I think many people are more nervous about it than before. But I do think there is equity available uh, and there is debt available for deals when the pricing gets closer to where people on both sides want to do it. I think their fundraising is more complicated now. Mm -hmm. Fundraising for new private equity funds is more challenging than it was a couple years ago because of the uh, called the denominator problem. They, they've, the groups that have money have less to give out because they, their overall corpus has shrunk a bit. But there's still money there. People find good deals at a good price. There will be money available. Are, are you surprised that there haven't been more defaults in companies when you bring interest rates from, you know, 0, 0.5, 0 percent to 5 percent, that nothing really ha has been broken? Well, there haven't been as many defaults as you might have expected, though I do think expect you'll see more defaults in the real estate area and commercial real estate. Commercial real estate has changed dramatically in Europe and the United States, in part because office buildings uh, that were used to be full are not full anymore because people work at home, so uh, the tenants don't really need as much space. In addition, interest rates have gone up. That means the value of the building has probably gone down. So if there are going to be defaults, there are probably going to be defaults in commercial office real estate in major cities. I think that will probably be the biggest uh, uh, area you'll see defaults. But also remember, a lot of the loans that were done years ago are so-called covenant light, which means that it's harder to default 
uh, for a while and you get a lot of uh, leeway. But should we worry about shadow banking more? I mean, commercial real estate is the one thing that, that's been telegraphed so much that I wonder whether there's going to be other pockets of the economy in distress. Well, um, shadow banking by that, by that what you mean is uh, people are lending money who are not right. regulated by the regulators typically. Yeah. And as you all know, uh, private equity firms have grown large private credit businesses. So the largest private equity firms operate gigantic private credit businesses, which are not regulated in the traditional sense that banks are regulated. Uh, right now, I think the government isn't doing anything to deal with that because there hasn't been a problem. Right. And I don't think there will be a problem. I think that the credit standards are pretty good, but there's always some challenge when the economy goes down. But right now, there, don't, there doesn't seem to be defaults there in the private credit business is doing pretty well. And that's the highest area of growth for the large private equity firms.